glasses or no glasses. I feel like I look dead. Greetings and salutations friends, my name is Ariana, and I was originally going to make an entire video called Movies That Women Should Have Written, and as I started doing that, I went down the rabbit hole for just covering this one movie that I'll be talking about today, and decided, you know what, I'm going to give it its own video, and maybe make it a series. So today I'm going to be talking about Assassination Nation. So some disclaimers before I continue. I am not saying that men cannot write female characters. I'm not saying they can't write nuanced female characters or positive representations. That's not all what I'm saying. They definitely can. Disclaimer number two, I'm not saying all women can write amazing works of art. I'm not saying all women are super talented and can write the greatest female characters. Definitely not. There are women who I don't agree with and their beliefs and morals, etc. And disclaimer number three is I'm not saying these movies would have automatically been a billion times better or perfect had a woman written them. This is just me being curious about how a woman would have approached this film differently and me exploring the differences between men writing female characters and women writing female characters. So with that said, let's talk about Assassination Nation. So the three subjects I want to cover in this video are the films featuring of the male gaze, its misinterpretation of female sexuality, and finally, its sexualization of violence against women. So, Assassination Nation is a 2018 film directed and written by Sam Levinson, and it's about four high school girls, one of which is Lily, and they're in this town called Salem, and suddenly a hacker has begun releasing everyone's private information and turning the town against each other, trying to find out who this hacker is. And the, our protagonist, Lily, is blamed for being the hacker. So something ironic about the film is it actually has a montage of trigger warnings that will be featured in the movie, one of which is the male gaze but specifically through men in the film holding cameras up and videotaping women. Now, the male gaze is the act of depicting women in cinema, in literature, in the arts, from a masculine, heterosexual perspective, and presents the women as sexual objects for the pleasure of the male viewer. But don't be fooled by this. The male gaze won't simply show up through that instance where a man is holding a camera up. To look for the male gaze on the filmmaker's part, we have to look at one thing, camera placement. Think, where is the camera placed in a certain shot and what is this shot translating to the audience or supposed to be translating? In order to discuss the violence and the sexualization of it later on in the video, we must first establish a male gaze in the film. There are multiple shots in which the male gaze to me is personally very obvious and very disturbing. So for context on the first image and shot I'm gonna be talking about, this is Lily. Lily is 18 and she's in high school and she's currently engaged in a sexual relationship with an adult man. It is the father of a kid she used to babysit. They, though they have not actually had sex, they are typically sexting and sending messages to each other. So this man is saved under her phone as daddy. And at one point after she arrives at her friend's house and she's sitting on the bed, we get this shot. And it's of her receiving a text message by daddy and the camera's placement exhibits her side breasts and thighs as she wears a tank top and high-waisted shorts. It's very odd to sexualize your protagonist when later on she's given an entire monologue at the finale about being objectified. This shot could have been positioned in any place with the text placed over it. In fact, it works better for your story to have it not exhibit her body so directly, but rather show her dress casually or not at this angle to exemplify the fact that she is only 18, is still in high school, and that her objectification comes directly from men, not the camera and the filmmaker. In this text message, Daddy literally refers to her as a girl, not a woman. And we as an audience want to think it's gross and disturbing that he is fetishizing her innocence. And yet the camera seems to be doing everything that this man is supposed to be doing. Another shot that firmly exhibits the male gaze is another instance in which Lily is texting the man. She is sexting him in the bathroom of her high school. The placement of the camera is firmly at an upward angle with her breast in the foreground, her nipple seen clearly through a pale bra. The camera could have literally been placed anywhere and we as an audience would understand that she is taking photos of herself to send to him. You don't even need to show her actual breast to get the point across. But still, the filmmaker and his DP, both men, chose to position the camera right here. The pink in the background only further presents this image of innocence and depicts the older man as even more as a creep. 
which is cool. I'm in agreement with that. So why are we staring directly at her breasts? To quote Katie Walsh from the LA Times, who actually wrote an article about the film when it came out, he and cinematographer Marcel Rev, who established a leering gaze directed at the girls' nubile bodies, take much delight in wringing every sexy moment out of attacking young women. But we'll get to that later. This scene, which never ends up showing the lower half of Lily's body, and features a few more close-up shots of her breast and her mouth in the POV of the phone, ends up with the close-up of her face, branding blush pink eyeshadow and lip gloss. Laura Mulvey's book Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema states, Conventional close-ups of legs or a face integrate into the narrative a different mode of eroticism. One part of a fragmented body destroys the Renaissance space, the illusion of depth demanded by the narrative. It gives flatness, the quality of a cutout or icon, rather a verisimilitude to the screen. And the beauty of a woman as object and the screen space coalesce. She is a perfect product whose body, stylized and fragmented by close-ups, is the content of the film and the direct recipient of the spectator's look. So if we take another look at these images and camera angles through Mulvey's analytical perspective, it seems the film itself objectifies Lily by reducing her to attractive body parts. So now that we've established the male gaze in the film, I want to discuss how Assassination Nation lacks understanding of what female sexuality actually looks like. So the first time that we see the girls together, the four girls, they're sitting on the bed having a discussion about sex. They're talking about how Lily's boyfriend won't provide her oral sex and who the character of Bex is currently sending messages to. This is all happening while they all sit on a bed, bent over, in booty shorts, under red lighting. This is followed up by the girls getting ready for a party, in slow motion, shaking their breasts, and dancing sexily on a bathroom counter. Now, in case you didn't know, I'm 18. I am an 18 year old woman. I will be turning 19 this month. So I know what 18 year old female sexuality looks like. And I think the main issue with men writing female characters who possess sexuality, especially older men writing youth culture sexuality, is in how they portray it. The truth is, female sexuality is not and shouldn't always be sexy. When women talk about and have pride in their sexuality, it isn't always happening in sexy outfits. For example, take a look at the film. It's a French film called Les Coquillettes. I really can't speak French. I think it, it translates to mac and cheese, basically. And this was written and directed by Sophie Letanour. The film is about three women recounting their experience at a film festival. And a majority of the film, or pretty much all of it, is based around their experience with men at the festival and how they were trying to sleep with certain men at the festival. But the difference is they are just sitting on their bed in pajamas, eating cupcakes, smoking cigarettes. One of them has a horrible pain in her eye, so it was like, has a, a cotton pad on her eye. And they're just discussing, super casually, the sexuality that they possess and show throughout the film. Being a woman who is sexually active and proud of that does not require sexy outfits or woke rhetoric. And finally, my last issue with the film Assassination Nation, which I've noticed a lot of people had with the film, is how it showcases violence against women in a pornographic and sexualized way. The scene that most obviously translates this, and is the most disturbing for me, occurs during the home invasion scene. Before this scene, another character is held up at gunpoint. However, in this scene, the gun is shoved into Sarah's mouth, appearing to be an obvious phallic symbol and creating an erotic attack scene. The next time we cut to this character in her attack, this is the shot that we get. The camera is placed on the floor and showcases her thighs and her legs as she wears cute mesh knee socks, once again fetishizing this character and this scene. Her face is not even shown, further dehumanizing her and reducing her to a body, one that is obviously nice to look at. Had the camera been placed in front of her or from her point of view as the man was dominating her, the same feeling of tension and weakness would be translated without the sex appeal. The next instance of sexualized violence occurs when Lily goes to see the man that she's been sexting, but after she is accused of hacking everyone and exposing the information, he believes it and he holds her at knife point. The camera follows him as he drags his knife across her flesh, her legs and arms, and up to her mouth. Meanwhile, the film cuts back to ravish in the arresting of Lily's other two friends as they are literally being tortured and mocked by the crowd and the cops, all in super cool slow motion. The camera lingers on each woman's suffering, almost as if it's relishing in their torture. Now, the argument to this might be, well, that's the point, Ariana. It's calling out the sexualizing of women on behalf of men and correlates that to the violence shown towards them. And I hear you, 
But aside from the gun being shoved into Sarah's mouth, this is not about the pain the male characters inflict on the women, but rather how they are portrayed through the camera work, through the filmmaker and the director of photography. To quote Katie Walsh again, the director and DP take much delight in wringing every sexy moment out of attacking young women, shooting scenes of violence that are gratuitously pornographic. This is common in the horror genre, but this goes above and beyond, and the difference is that Dario Argento, the director of the original Suspiria and the screenwriter for the new Suspiria, never ended his films with a boneheaded lecture about feminism. Which brings me to my final point. The movie is quite literally about the female experience. It discusses female trauma, and it all culminates into a monologue given by Lily at the end of the film about the convoluted way in which women are raised to act for men. But all I was thinking and left thinking once the scene was over was, Sam Levinson, how the fuck would you know what any of this feels like? Who are you to tackle the nuances of a Gen Z woman in America? Of a Gen Z trans woman in America? Of a Gen Z black woman in America? And who are you to preach to the audience after delivering a film with complex issues that is glaring with hollow hypocrisy? all delivered by characters we don't even really like because they're trying to sound annoyingly woke and politically correct. Which maybe just goes to show a 35-year-old man's idea on what it means to be an 18-year-old feminist. So, if none of this sold you and you think it's complete bullshit, I'm gonna take it a step further and compare Assassination Nation to another film, Black Christmas, the 2019 version, to provide some perspective. This is how Black Christmas succeeds where Assassination Nation fails. But today I'm going to be talking about the 2019 version, which was written by Sophia Tockle and April Wolf and directed by Sophia, because we want to tackle what today's horror and social commentary look like through a female lens. Like Assassination Nation, Black Christmas also introduces the sexuality of its women, specifically in its opening scene. It shows one character who is about to get attacked on the phone with her secret Santa, and her secret Santa tells her that she got her a vibrator. She doesn't even say the word vibrator, but it's implied. Another element of the film worth noting is the wardrobe. Though it does take place in the winter, which is obviously cold and calls for warm clothing, and the women who we establish already possess sexuality do not dress scantily or sexy, but rather casually. The women actually acknowledge dressing sexy later on in the film for their Christmas performance, where they wear tight red dresses. The film does not strive to emphasize their sexy sexuality, but rather emphasize their control of it. It's also worth mentioning that these women, like the women in Assassination Nation, also engage in feminist political conversation. The only exception is they do not speak in whiny valley girl voices, occasionally saying vapid sentences that are just disguised as woke. In Black Christmas, the women speak like normal women in college, pursuing petitions, rape culture, and terminology. Similar subjects to Assassination Nation, but executed vastly different. Now, there is an attempted rape scene in Black Christmas, but it is constructed under the female gaze, literally, as Riley, our protagonist, looks at her friend about to be attacked through the door and intervenes to protect her and stop it from happening. Now, to get onto the issue of violence, it's worth noting that Black Christmas, the 2019 version, is PG-13. Because of this rating, it's obvious that the deaths are not going to be as gory as they were in Assassination Nation. But regardless, in scenes featuring death, which are on behalf of men, the male gaze is not present. A choking scene does not inhabit any phallic form. It does not revel in their torture or linger intensely long and in slow motion of their pain. And the crimes are committed quickly. Overall, Black Christmas, written and directed by a woman, understands how to convey female issues such as sexuality, political agendas, and violence in a genuine and relatable way. Oh, and we don't need a slow motion tracking shot of their legs to know that these women are badasses who possess sexuality. Assassination Nation as a satire falls flat on trying to be deep because it is so horrendously focused on trying to be cool and nothing is cool about female trauma. And I wish more women were given the support and the resources and the opportunity to write movies about the female experience, our experience, our trauma, instead of men. So this was my review of the film and the issues that I had with Assassination Nation. Once again, I want to say that I'm not saying a woman writing this would have made it a billion times better. I don't know that. I don't know that for sure. No one does. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. One final disclaimer, I really tried to go into this video with the utmost respect and objectivity. I wanted to include actual quotes from people a lot smarter than me, a lot more 
invested in the film industry and analysis of film than me to really drive my point across because last time I made a rant video about Sin City, I received a lot of, well, it was like three, but I received some condescending comments on behalf of men who dismissed me because I was really angry about something. So this is something that I am angry about, but wanted to pursue in a more academic and patient way so that I could hopefully achieve some respect in my video and in my opinions. If you can give this video a thumbs up, that would be awesome. And subscribe for more videos every Sunday on films. Thank you.